I recently took down the privacy fence around our property and in this video I'll share a few lessons learned. Our house was built in 2007 so the fence has a maximum age of 14 years considering it's 2021 and about half of it is in okay condition and about half of it is in bad structural shape with several pickets missing or damaged. My initial plan for tearing down the fence was to try to salvage as much as possible starting with the pickets and I had the idea of using these to make a rustic play fort of some kind for my daughter or, or, or something similar. So I started removing them one screw at a time. The screws that were used for construction were T25 star head screws so they were removed easily but it only took removing one or two of the pickets to realize it was a horribly time consuming idea. Plan B was to start cutting. A long blade reciprocating saw was the first tool of choice, and it worked well to cut the horizontal 2x4s to separate the panels from the posts. My friend John came over to lend a hand, and at that point we tried using both the reciprocating saw as well as a circular saw. After a little bit, the reciprocating saw vibration was quite annoying on the forearms. The circular saw was much easier on the forearms, but the dust it threw into the air was very annoying to the face and the skin. Being pelted with dust while you're sweaty from the summer sun was a deal breaker. So we put the circular saw away and we took turns abusing our arms with the reciprocating saw. After exhausting all of my half charged and unprepared batteries, we switched gears to the post. And at this point, I wasn't sure if concrete was used for each post, but it was. Our first plan of attack was to use a farm jack to lift the post at one of the horizontal 2x4 connection points. I'd jack it up a little bit and then John would push from the other side, up and over, up and over, up and over, and, and while this worked for a couple of them, it was, it was way too much struggle. There had to be a better way. Also, the panels started to get in the way at this point. We switched gears again to start stacking the panels on my trailer. And because most of these panels ended up being in, in much worse shape than what I thought, uh, I thought the only option here was to take them to the landfill instead of stacking them for my own personal use. However, after some recommendations on social media, I posted them for free online and two people ended up getting everything, including the posts with the concrete. Back to removing the panels after the batteries were charged. When working on a large manual labor project like this, I always think of the better or more efficient way of working when I'm nearing the end of the work. I'm sure most of you can relate. In this case, it dawned on me to use my chainsaw to cut the panels when I was on the last stretch of the fence. It's much, much easier on the forearms and quicker, assuming there's a sharp blade. On the second panel, I grazed the side of a stray screw and doled just one side of the chain, which made the blade incredibly dull and rapidly drift to one side. I continued with the dull blade for just a few more panels, but it, it, got, it just got too hot and started smoking the chain oil. So back to the reciprocating saw for the last time. At this point, all the panels were down and my trailer had one full load ready to go to the landfill so we couldn't stack any more panels on the trailer. So back to the posts. We removed a couple more the hard way until John had to leave for the evening. During supper that evening, I thought about a way to remove the posts a little bit easier and with one person instead of two. And what I came up with was to create a pivot point to get a greater mechanical advantage. I screwed two eight foot two by eights together to form a 14 foot long beam. And my idea was to screw this to two posts and use the farm jack on the overhang. This would give me a mechanical advantage to increase the jacking force while also getting the base of the jack out of the way of the large concrete ball coming out of the ground. This worked at first and I continued for a few posts before realizing a couple areas for improvement. First, there was no need to secure the beam to the second post. It could just lay on the ground, eliminating one attachment task. Second, the four three and a half inch decking screws that I used to attach the beam to the first post were starting to bend and eventually they just pulled out of one of the posts. I needed a better and faster attachment method. The only thing that I had in the shop that I thought might work was a 12 inch piece of 3 quarter inch threaded rod. I drilled a 3 quarter inch hole into the beam and a 1 inch hole into the post. In this case the beam can be quickly attached to the post by sliding the threaded rod through and I didn't worry about putting a nut on the back side because the threads would dig into the wood and prevent slipping. This worked surprisingly well, so I went ahead and drilled holes in all of the posts before continuing. This method was quick and effective. 
I was able to jack these posts up out of the ground by myself much faster and easier than the two-person method we started with. By the end of day two, I had all of the posts out of the ground and someone had already taken off all of the fence panels. Day three consisted of getting these posts to a centralized location on the property and then loading them onto someone else's trailer. I was really shocked that someone wanted to take these posts, but I absolutely did not complain. He said he wasn't sure what these would eventually be, but the last fence he picked up for free ended up being a chicken coop. And finally, to wrap up day three and the last of this fence demo project, I used a garden hoe to pull as much of the residual dirt back into the holes. I still need to come back with fill dirt and finish filling in the holes, but this, as well as mowing the lawn one final time, was literally all I had time for. I had a three day window before a lot of heavy rain on the forecast and I finished just in time. So the rest of this is cell phone images. A few takeaways from this fence demo first, like most all manual labor projects, experience of actually doing the manual labor often results in thinking of smarter ways to get the job done. Creating a large lever to jack the posts out of the ground easily is definitely my recommended method for a one-man post removal. Second, by removing the fence, we immediately gained about five feet of usable land in the back of our backyard, and not shown here, we have already cleared about 10 more feet of vines, weeds, and bushes to get a total of about 15 more feet of continuously shaded area for something like, a, I don't know, maybe a future play fort for the kids. All of this is still on our property according to a recent land survey, so that's good. And lastly, we realized that we prefer not having a fence in our backyard at all, so we will likely not build another one. It just makes our yard feel much larger and gives more of a community vibe when we talk to our neighbors outside. So why tear down the fence in the first place? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, because it was nearing the end of its lifespan. And number two, we needed to remove some of it for a future outdoor entertaining area. And it didn't make sense to have that area replaced with new fence and then leave the old fence. It just, it just wouldn't match at all. Now, regarding the outdoor entertaining area, we're contracting most of it out. The contractor will do the drainage work, the slab, and the pole barn style shelter that will match the shop that's already in the backyard. I'll do the electrical, the bar build, uh, any furniture that needs to be built, the half walls, and, and any other small stuff. If you'd like to see the progression of this outdoor entertaining area, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and go to my website, jacecustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish. I'm sure I'm going to publish a little bit more on my website uh, versus my main YouTube channel regarding this outdoor entertaining area. You guys take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.